It's day two of the Celebrity MasterChef semi-finals. I don't think it'd be an exaggeration to say that cooking has definitely taken over my life. These celebrities are all passionate about food. I don't even want to think about not getting through to the final. We're looking for that exceptional cooking star. Someone who's more than just a good home cook. Someone with that extra something special. You want to be in the final because you want to win. Fact. These four celebrities are all fighting for a place in the Celebrity MasterChef finals. Only three of them can go through. To prove they have the talent to go further, they'll face cooking challenges that would stretch the most experienced chefs. Today, that test is all about fine dining. First, they must prove they can master a classic recipe. It looks like something a seven-year-old would do. Then they'll cook for some of aristocracy's most discerning palates. There was no way in the world that those people didn't enjoy that dish because it was fantastic. You put those back in the oven, put those back in the oven, put those back in that pan and back in the oven. Before creating an immaculate dinner party dish of their own design. That, for me, is seriously impressive. This is serious stuff. You know, master chefs, an institution. I think for me to get into the final, I really have to improve over the next few days. Oh, master chef, I mean, it, it's, it's all consuming. I mean, you, know, you want to win it, you want to go as far as you can. I can't talk about being kicked out at this point because I don't want to talk about anything negative. I'm here and I want to make it to the final. We know that our four celebrities can cook. That's why they're here. It's now about taking those skills and refining them and making them better. Today, you're going to be making us lobster thermidor. Oh, yes. This is an exquisite and beautiful dish, and it's not easy. But you are semi-finalists on Celebrity MasterChef. Ladies and gentlemen, you have 45 minutes. Let's cook. Classic recipe test, and it's lobster thermidor. An absolute wonderful classic. And as a classic, it has to be precise. It'll test their flavouring, it'll test their palate, it'll also test their touch and their presentation. Good is no longer good enough. It has to be great. Lobster Thermidor has been a dinner party classic since first being served in 19th century Paris. It's made by boiling a whole lobster, then mixing the flesh with a bechamel sauce, made from a delicate balance of roux, sherry, mustard and cheese. It's then put back in the shell and grilled until golden. How are our celebrities going to cope with a whole lobster? <sighs> Bravo. I sort of think about spiders and legs and things like that. But you cooked prawns before? Yeah, but prawns were, like, small. Actor Mark is a strong, passionate cook. That is the best flavour and texture combination I've tasted in a long, long time, mate. But the judges have criticised his messy approach, and he can crumble under pressure. Do you know about the sauce? The sauce? Yeah, it's got no bacon in it. Yeah, but how, oh, did, how did that happen? I've no idea. I put myself under too much pressure, I think, and um, my emotions have been running all over the place but um, I just want to do well. What do you think this is all about for you, Mark? It's a step up for me, this. I want to try and be as methodical as possible and give myself time to present the dish as it should be presented. In the competition, we've seen you be very, very passionate, Mark, and right now you are seen to be very driven. I think I have to be. I know I've got to knuckle down and, and go up a notch, if not 10 notches. You have 30 minutes to go. Actor Lewis has proven he's got a great natural palate. That is damn near perfect. Very nice. 
but he sometimes struggles to create coherent plates of food. You've got two dishes yeah. on one plate. Chucking the avocado and salmon on the side is almost like committing murder. You're not entirely comfortable with this one, are you? No, I'm not. I've never seen a man your size so nervous over something that's not as big as his foot. <laughs> Can you see the way this dish is going to be presented? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to visualise it. But I've just never done this before, so I'm not quite sure what, what to keep and what not to keep. I think I might leave you to it. Yeah. Go on, before you do yourself an injury. Thank you. Well, there seems to have this sort of blindness about recipes. It's A, sort of struggling to follow it, but then kind of not knowing what the end product should look like until you actually get it on the plate. You have just 20 minutes left. Atomic Kitten star Liz is a novice cook with raw talent. Tell you what, you, you do it every now and again. That just ticks every box of a roast dinner. Brilliant. Well done. But her inexperience sometimes lets her down. <gasps> My glasses just broke. My glasses just broke. Liz, Liz, sort it out. I think with my lack of experience in cooking, it does lead me to really panic sometimes. But I think I'm holding my own. I really do, and I'm really proud of myself. Liz, all those years of being a pop star, all those posh restaurants eating lobster, hold you in good stead to do this dish? Yeah, no, it tastes, I love it. I love the, I love the taste of the thermidor. Can you see the dish in your mind's eye? I can. I don't know just how it's going to get there. But, you know, I, I want to be able to do stuff like this. this. I mean, this would be really cool if I could, you know, do stuff like this at home, so... And uh, what do you think Liz, the semi-finalist, has to do to progress? I think I'm putting enough effort in, but I think I need to trust my own instincts more. You've got five minutes, guys. TV presenter Andy has wowed the judges with his technical skill. I do not have a critical comment at all. I mean, that's incredible. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. But he has one recurring weakness. What you've done here, I feel, is you've sacrificed flavour for technique. And you need to be able to get that balance. I spend a lot of time designing how the plate should look. I literally start with the end product and work backwards. But let's be honest, you do eat with your eyes. We did talk about fine dining. Are you up for that, Andy? Because you eat out a bit, don't you? I do eat out a fair bit, and I love lobster. I've never prepared it before in my life, but I know how it's meant to taste. You are very comfortable with this, aren't you? You know me, I just pray that it looks nice. Yeah, but it has to taste nice. Obviously, and I promise you, I'm not going to let technique get over taste. You've got one minute. One minute left. Step away from your benches. Your time is up. Now, classically, what you want is a beautiful, silky sauce that is slightly salty from the cheese, slightly spicy from the mustard. A sauce that accompanies and not clashes with that very expensive succulent flesh. OK, let's start with you, Andy. Lovely soft lobster, creamy sauce. For me, it just needs a bit more mustard, a bit more punch. Cheese comes through. It's good bechamel sauce. It's lovely and smooth, but it does need a tang. Right. It does need the mustard tang. John and Greg's comments about my dish today have been duly noted. You have burnt the shell. We do need a smarter looking lobster. Okay. Your sauce, I reckon, needs to be a little bit thinner, but you have the flavours. You always, always have the flavours, mate. I think you've got the balance right. Mustard, cheese, absolutely right. Lobster's gone slightly over. Probably reflected in the charring of the shell. Strong mustard, strong cheese, love the flavour of it. Quite like the texture of the lobster, probably just a little bit over, but not too much. But we will keep on drumming into you. Presentation. OK, OK, got it. I'm not up to the mark with the presentation, which really disappoints me. But taste-wise, I, I think I'm heading in the right direction. Salty, soft lobster, acidic and salty cheese, 
rich, rich dish. Very, very well done. Your lobster is really soft and nice. The sauce is very, very well made. That was a really tough challenge, that, because that is fine dining at its finest. That thing scared the hell out of you, and it made you freeze and unable to even cut it in half. And all you really had to do was just cut the lobster in half and take the meat out. I've never eaten one, I've never made one, so I didn't really know where I was going with it. There is the taste of sherry in there. There is a little bit of mustard in there. The issue now, Lewis, is your ability to be able to read a recipe and understand how it should look. Slightly sharp, slightly sweet sauce. It looks like something a seven-year-old would do. Yeah. Oh, man, lobster. <laughs> Thanks very much. We'll see you again soon. Well, lobster thermidor. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's an impressive dish to serve up, isn't it? I love when we do a classic recipe because, as a judge, it's really easy to see where the strengths and weaknesses lie. Andy is a very, very good technical cook, but there needs to be some heart, there needs to be some flavour. I don't think we'll get great food from Andy until he gets stressed and gets hot and sweaty. And then we'll see the cook come through. I'm never really happy with what John and Greg say, simply because in a dream world they'd say, I love your food. They never say that, so I'm never happy. Bags of flavour in Mark's, bags of flavour. But it gets too scruffy. If Mark can concentrate on the presentation of his food as much as he can on his flavour, he's going to end up with great, great dishes. I describe my food as rustic and as home, homely food, so I think I'm going to find this fine dining style quite difficult. Liz has been exposed to good restaurants and she knew how it should have been presented. I think Liz did well. She has great, great natural talent. I was, you know, I was made up. I've never cooked a lobster before and I did another thing today that I can put him to off the list. Poor old Lewis. He was absolutely terrified of his lobster. You have to be in control of your food. You're the boss. And today, he let the lobster be the boss. But it had the flavour. You know, at least it tasted good. And, and that's ultimately is the main thing. Now it gets really exciting. They're out to the real world, a dinner party, and our four cooks have to perform to the best they possibly can. Now they are going to be cooking food for some very discerning palates indeed. It's early morning, and the celebrities are travelling to Kent for their next challenge. What's that? <gasps> oh, my God! Maybe we're cooking for the Queen. Penshurst Place, the 700-year-old ancestral home of the Delisle family, is steeped in food history. Monarchs from Henry VIII to the late Queen Mother have dined here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pentonshurst Place and have a look around and get some idea of the grandeur and the history of the place. You are preparing dinner tonight for eight especially invited guests, including the owners of this manor house, Viscount and Viscountess de Lisle. They are big, big foodies. They move in gastronomic circles. You have to make sure your food is absolutely spot on. Each one of you is going to be preparing and cooking your own course. Four course dinner, eight guests, lots of pressure, and timing is an issue. Cook like you've never cooked before. 6.30 service, ladies and gentlemen. Let's cook. To cook in a place where Henry VIII actually had a banquet, I mean, that is, it's, it's just amazing. Can you imagine me, a kid from Liverpool late, cooking for aristocracy like this? I mean, my, <laughs> my dad would be laughing at this, I could tell you. A bit of a huge experience, really, um, cooking for a Viscount and Viscountess in a huge, huge, what is it, a castle? I don't even know. This competition gets harder and harder at every stage and I do want to get to the final, so I just have to keep trying. It's 3pm. The contestants only have three and a half hours before the guests arrive. They have been given the recipes, but for the first time, they will be in charge of their own kitchen. Generously butter the 
Ram Ramakins. Ramakins? Lewis is cooking the starter, a delicate twice-baked cheese souffle. Will he be able to concentrate and follow this demanding recipe? Well, it's all very delicate, certainly not comfort food. I think it's light on taste and I think it's sort of light on the plate, if you know what I mean. Mark is in charge of the fish course, seared scallops and cauliflower with a caper and raisin sauce. But will he be able to handle the pressure and refine his presentation? I like scallops, yeah. I've cooked them a few times. But cooking them to order and getting the timing right makes it really difficult. Andy's challenge is to make sure his dish of roast partridge with cabbage, bacon and chestnuts tastes as good as it looks. I have literally never even touched the partridge in my life. I've only ever seen them on the television. And Liz is responsible for the apple tart tatin with vanilla creme fraiche. This technically demanding classic needs to be carefully cooked to ensure crisp pastry and a luscious caramel sauce. I've never cooked for a dinner party before in my life, and I am petrified. An environment like this means that they have to produce fine food. They're going to have to work extremely hard to be able to get the standards that the guests expect. First course is one hour's time, guys. Yes. I hear you. Souffles, you know, the nature is to rise, but also that means that they can sink. And um, I'm hoping that doesn't play tomorrow, and I hope I can get them by now. It is the first time I've cooked souffles. <laughs> Maybe my last after today. It's Lewis that really scares me, because whenever we go into a recipe, we've had a virtual disaster on our hands. A twice-baked souffle is not an easy job at all. Mark has to give himself enough time and be patient enough to put all those component parts on the plate without panicking. This is no time to be heavy handed. Just take your time, get the presentation absolutely right. I've made a few mistakes this week, so I want to redeem myself tonight if I can and, uh, you know, shine. This style of cooking is definitely more me. It's all about precise and making it look nice. So I, I'm in my element. I'm worried on behalf of Mark. I'm worried on behalf of Lewis because I've got to wait for those two. So if they make a mistake, that means I'll make a mistake and it'll go wrong. Andy, in his own mind, is cooking the star of the show, the main course. Well, yes, it is a star, Andy, but if we get it wrong and that bird not cooked properly, it becomes absolutely useless. I'm good at recipes, but for some reason, this recipe is not going in. What I'm worried about most is caramelising the apples because it's really precise and I'm not a very precise person. Liz has got tatatan. We have eaten bad tatatans in our life and we know how it can go wrong. Pastry soggy, apples not cooked, caramel not cooked properly. Normally, if she's eaten it, she can present it. It's whether she's eaten one or not. Liz, have you eaten a tatatan before? No. Oh, well. <laughs> There's only 30 minutes to go before the first course needs to be served. Um, I've just taken the souffles out. They're supposed to rise, they have risen, I'm happy with that. Um, I, I guess that's what they should look like. Um, yeah, I'm happy. The guests start to arrive. Lord and Lady Delisle are renowned for their society events. Lady Delisle is a trained cordon bleu cook and celebrated hostess. So the contestants have a lot to live up to. Hi, everybody. Hi. How's it going? Very well so Very far. Well, thank you. well, all the guests are here. Good out. We are all salivating feverishly because the smell is absolutely delicious. Enjoy yourself. Yes. Enjoy. You bet. I, it's you. supper's the wrong word. This is, <laughs> this is dinner, big time. <laughs> See you thank later. You. Thank See you. Later. Bye. With the souffles baked once, can Lewis accomplish the most delicate step and turn them out without them losing their shape? Now, after adding cheese and cream, the next crucial step is to get them back in the oven to brown with just minutes to go. Right. 
Lewis, that's it. It's half past six. OK, yeah? good to go. After his lobster disaster, can Lewis redeem himself with his twice baked cheese souffles? You can taste all the distinct tastes, mm, all the different, all the different flavors. I think it tastes delicious. I, I really do. It's it's a brute to cook, isn't it? I know that for a fact. Mm. But it, 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 is, it is delicious. I mean, I would be very hard put to it to criticise. Hi there. Come on in. Is it safe to come in? It is safe to come in. Absolutely. Well, I think that I, I would be speaking for all, all eight of us, Lewis, if I said that um, it, it was, we enjoyed every mouthful hugely. Well, thank you very much. I'll have to widen the door because my head's going to be going like <laughs> Get it. Oh, good. <laughs> I am knocked out. I mean, just uh, uh, again, you know, uh, above and beyond all my wildest expectations, I did. I, I'm just, I'm totally chuffed. We've had doubts about Lewis and recipes. There it was, and there was no way in the world that those people didn't enjoy that dish because it was fantastic. Mark's up next, and he has only a few minutes to sear and plate up. 55 fresh scallops. It's fairly short on time. The presentation is always the nerve wracking stage. Two minutes for this fish course. But determined to get his presentation right, he discovers too late he hasn't cooked enough scallops. Do us a favour, whack some more scallops on. Do about six. It's just difficult. Six. Mark, what do you want? Yeah, we'll just old, get them cooked, please. Get them cooked. Yeah. Old pan. Yeah, it's okay. You right, Mark? You going now? <sighs> you need to call service, Mark. Yes, yeah, service, please. And the last one. <sighs> that was a nightmare, man. <sighs> Mark just manages to rescue his seared scallops with cauliflower and a caper and raisin sauce. The scallops themselves obviously been seared very quickly. And very well. And quite bright, and they're very delicious in the center. The scallops were great because they were crispy on the outside, but the inside they weren't jelly-like. They were firm and they were sort of meaty. It's a fine line between triumph and disaster. Hopefully, I got it right. And I Hi there. Hello. 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 Well, how did you find that? At last, I suppose, the last 15, 20 minutes was fairly traumatic. Was I it? To say. May I just say that the, the mood of the meeting, if you like, the eight <laughs> of us, just thought that the scallops were the most beautifully cooked. Well, thank you. I'm very happy. So, many congratulations. Enjoy the rest of your meal. Thank, thank you. you. So much. Thank, you. Later. thank you. Thank you. I think they're generally a thumbs up, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased with, with, the, with the outcome. Mark had a task today, and the task was to present food very, very well. And he struggled. You see him struggle with it, but he did it. Back in the kitchen, Liz is caramelising some butter and brown sugar to give her tart tatin its sticky consistency. The thing is, is these people know about posh food. Get it wrong, and they'll tell you. Uh, can someone shut the oven for me, please? Yeah, yeah. Andy has been helping the others out, but this has distracted him from his own delicate partridge dish. No, right, that oven's not working properly. These things are nowhere near cooked. That this oven is not on at all. Oh, maybe you've got to turn it up on that one. Right, on, flipping it, no, then. I did mine, uh... Yeah, they're nowhere near cooked. Oh. Sorry, it doesn't need both. Mm -hmm. Leave the oh, oven man. door shut. OK. My brain is saying, open the oven and see if they're cooked. What do you reckon? Look, these ovens just don't feel hot to me. That's... It's on, yeah. It's def definitely on. We, no, 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 we were going to get them out. We're going to get... <laughs> <laughs> don't! 
Open the oven! But I don't even know if it's working. Time is running out. Excuse me. And Andy is desperate to avoid delaying service. About one minute, please. You know, you do if you're running late. No. You go and tell them the main course is going to be five minutes. I think I might be able to do it. Lewis, are the first four ready? Are the second four ready? That's, um, yeah, are the second. No, you want the ones that are in here, don't you? Yeah. These, you get them out. You put those back in the oven. Put those back in the oven. Put those back in that pan and back in the oven. I'm going to don't get five minutes to delay. Off enough, yeah, put them back in the oven. Just put them back in the oven. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, to ensure that your punched is perfectly cooked, it's going to be five more minutes. Well, that is absolutely fine. But it will yes. be well worth the wait. I'm sure you. Okay, that's just fine. Thank you. Can you can you wait that long? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Those are the first two. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, the guests are served their roast partridge with cabbage, bacon, and chestnuts. It looks very, very appetizing. Very nice. It really does. Very pretty. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit raw. To be honest, I mean, I like my partridge yeah, thick. I like my one half, I um, opened up, and it's right in the centre. It is raw. It may be that a few bits of the leg are pinker than they should be. It would be something to do with where it was in the oven, maybe, yeah. or not yes. being turned round during cooking. Um, you win some, you lose some. Well, 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 so we're, we're used to the breadcrumbs. <laughs> That's how the rest um, I mean, you can probably see if you come here. The legs yeah. are, uh, uh, you know, a bit underdone. Know. With game, you can never legislate for, 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 for them all being the same size. Of course. Size. I was mortified that Lady Delisle's bird was slightly undercooked, and as I glanced across the table, literally a good vet could have got the other one going. I, I'm so relieved it's over. And he did struggle with that partridge. He really did. He went out the oven, back in the oven, out the oven, in the oven. Now, if the oven's not hot enough, blast it right up. It's your dish. You can't blame your equipment. Your guests don't care. Pretty darn one to go, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah, Want a quick run around the Italian garden to um, make room? <laughs> yes. Liz's tart tartans are nearly cooked, but she's discovered a missing ingredient. What's that? Zest. Where's it supposed to be? In, in it. Okay. So. One sec, one sec, Liz, 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 Liz. They're in the oven. Yes. You've got to place your top on them. Yeah. They're cooking. I'm never. Done. Having left it out of her tarts, Liz decides to try the lemon zest in her creme fraiche sauce. That is, not, I like that. Not even close to cook. Okay. Not even close. Don't panic. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Liz decides the pastry is ready. But as the tarts are cooked upside down, it's not until she turns them out that she'll discover if there's enough caramel sauce on the apples. Yeah. Does it look good? Oh, we are. That's got loads, that one. That one's not as... Cooked, I think that's what it is, you know, not as cooked. Service! With some more caramelised than others, what will the diners make of her tart tartan with creme fraiche? Yes. Usually it's a bit more caramelised, there's a bit more sugar, a bit more brownness, a bit more sort of... Deliciousness on the top. The pastry is undercooked. It tastes perfectly all right. It tastes it's very good. good. It's, it's a good. jolly difficult dish to get right. I think the lemon and the creme fraiche actually work extremely well. Mm. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Now, did you enjoy cooking that? It was so difficult, actually. Very it was really good. difficult, yeah. And um, I don't think it was caramelised enough for me. I think could have done with more sugar and things. And so, because when it came out, I sort of went. 
oh my god, what can I do? Well, well done you well, for, for realising that. I mean, but given maybe. that you've not cooked it or eaten it before. Yeah. Um, Enjoy the rest of the evening, yeah. thank you. <laughs> They're actually really nice in there, but I'm really disappointed because I wish there, were, there was more caramel on it. Celebrity MasterChef semi-finals and a huge task, but they didn't do too badly at all. I'm feeling uh, ecstatic. Uh, I think, yeah, I think, it, I think it's my best, my best moment so far, yeah. The most difficult thing for me today was the fact that my very normal, regimented way of cooking was disrupted, and I hate that, because it, it threw me. It didn't turn out how I wanted it to turn out, and, you know, if I'm going to win, it's got to be perfect. Every day is a new challenge, and every, every challenge you conquer, you feel like you're progressing, and, you, you know, there's one less challenge to face, because it's tough. Jokes aside, right now, I couldn't give you a leaderboard. I mean, I know who did very well tonight, but so far in this competition, I couldn't tell you who should stay and who should go right now. There's no rest for the celebrities as they make their way across London. After last night, Liz and Andy know they've got to up their game. The semi-finals for me has so far been a roller coaster because I get good comments and then I get really bad comments and that's a bit scary. I just don't want to go out on a semi-final. I've really enjoyed it and I don't... I just don't want to. <laughs> They're heading to the Royal Hospital Chelsea, home of the Chelsea pensioners. You have a very, very important and sumptuous dinner to prepare tonight. You are cooking for 12 guests. They will include the Mayor of Chelsea and the Lieutenant Governor of the hospital. It has to be absolutely perfect. These people know what they're eating, they understand good food. There is also an added logistical factor today, and that is you'll be preparing your food in a very, very large preparation kitchen, then you have to transport it over to a servery kitchen on this side of the building. So, we give you fine dining, we give you volume, and we give you a logistical nightmare. It wouldn't be Celebrity MasterChef without a bit of fun, would it? <laughs> I think this is going to test your skills and organisation to the limit. The challenge is harder this time because each celebrity has to design their own dish for tonight's dinner. Twelve people they have to serve for dinner tonight and they have to do it with their own recipes. I tell you what, I hope they've thought about this very, very well. It's petrifying cooking my own dish. I'd much rather follow a recipe and someone say, cook that, and I go, OK. My standards are actually quite high anyway. I am a bit of a perfectionist. I just think I want to be good at it. <laughs> you stand and fall by what you choose to cook, um, so I want to make the plate look really nice and appetising, and that's going to be a tough challenge with the time. What I'm nervous about is the timing. It's um, making sure that it's cooked at a certain time and they're ready to go on the plate and out to the, uh, the guests at the right time, so time is a big issue on this one. At the last dinner party we cooked at, I was quite upset, simply because I know that the dish I served up, some of them were undercooked, and that really upset me and disappointed me. That won't happen again. I've learned from my mistakes, and hopefully that will count towards getting me to the final. The Royal Hospital Chelsea was set up over 300 years ago as a retreat for army veterans injured or unfit for service. Tonight, its opulent halls will be the setting for this prestigious dinner party. Liz is cooking the starter and has created a white onion soup with Thai spices. Andy has decided to play it safe with monkfish, pancetta and sage kebabs. Meanwhile, Lewis has gone for a very complicated main of breaded lamb with a foie gras stuffing and a side of carrots and courgettes. 
And Mark has chosen an apple tart with blackberry and caramel sauce and a cream and almond topping. As she's first up, Liz has just two hours prep time before service. The time's just like slipping away. I'm petrified. Today, the problem is, is that I've got an added pressure because I have to leave to go to my best friend's wedding, which I've already missed the day of because this is so important to me and she understands, but I need to be there for the night. So I have to get my starter done, out, save it and get on my way. We be like saying the bows about now. Oh, will he? Yeah. Having had a bad round at the previous dinner party, Andy has changed his tactics. I decided today to go for something quite simple because I didn't want to try and put myself under too much stress. And with the two kitchen thing, there are too many variables. If I can get a dish that I prep in one kitchen and cook quickly in another, it made me feel a bit more comfortable. This is not the place for Andy to make a mistake today. He's made a mistake already with raw food, and we know how easy it is to undercook fish. Across the courtyard, final preparations to the lavish state apartments are being made. Built to entertain royal visitors, the hall has hosted banquets for the heads of the armed forces and the queen. Back in the kitchen, with his confidence boosted, Lewis is going all out to impress with his complicated lamb dish. Time has a habit of sort of running away from me. At the moment, it's okay, but come back in an hour, I might be, I might be panicking. Lewis's main course is complicated and rich. Lamb cutlets filled with foie gras and almond crust served with mushrooms, courgettes and carrots. That is a big meal. That is a lot of work to get on a plate. Having just conquered his presentation problems, can Mark continue and present a refined apple tart? There's a lot more science involved with desserts and uh, I wasn't great at science at school. But if you want to be a good cook, you've got to learn every aspect. So it's no good being good at doing savouries and no good at puds. You're wasting your time. But he suddenly realises his butter is too chilled after he's added it to the pastry mix. Put the butter in without melting it, so rather than make a fresh batch, I'm just going to try and melt it down in the hot water. And that's the, um, that's the method in my madness. It's half an hour before service, and the esteemed guests have arrived, including the mayor of Chelsea and his wife, the lieutenant governor and matron of the hospital, and six of the pensioners, including Sergeant Charles McLaughlin from the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment and gunner Ernest Boyden, who fought at Normandy. But with just 20 minutes to service, Liz has a problem. It's too hot. Really spicy. Really spicy. With such little time left, Liz has to act quickly to save her dish and find some cream to cool the soup down. 10 million times better. Lewis is also struggling to get his lamb dish finished. Lewis, you haven't got a huge amount of time left. We're not going to get through all the work, are we? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Do you not think it's worthwhile probably rallying the troops and asking for a bit of help? I'm okay for now. I think I'll ask him if I need. Okay, fine. Uh, Lewis has got we've still got a lot to do. A lot, 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 lot to do, and I'm worried for him. Mayor, mayoress, ladies and gentlemen, please make your way through to the council chambers as dinner is served. Thank you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You need to start to hoof it across the way. You've got about okay. 10 minutes before you're going to start serving. OK. While Liz rushes to get her soup across the courtyard to the service kitchen, Woo! Mark and Lewis are frantic. Oh, man. Meanwhile, Andy has his course under control. I'm trying to be calm. I don't want to get flustered. So I want to just... Do this in my own time, make sure it all works. It's um, hectic, it's going to go right down to the wire. I'm going to hop on. They said these would be on. God! Oh, 
Shall I say grace? For what we are about to receive, thank God. Amen. 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 Some of you will recognize that grace as the Royal Artillery Grace. Oh, no. <laughs> Commendably brief. Are we nearly ready? Save us. Save us. Come on. Take them. Thank you. Please, God, let them like it. Please, 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 please. Save us. Thank you very much indeed. One more, one more, one more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely petrified. I just want them to like it desperately so much. Can't even find out. I've got to go, so I'm going to leave that there. Bye. Liz rushes off to her best friend's wedding. But what will the diners make of her white onion soup with Thai spices? What do you think? Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. This is wonderful soup, truly. It's <laughs> rather, rather hot. <laughs> what was nice was the kick was immediate, but didn't last. Brilliant. Very nice indeed. Meanwhile, Lewis has stuffed his lamb with foie gras and prepared the breadcrumb coating. But with time running out, he'll need help to get all his veg done in time. If you need Anne, over there, it'd be brilliant to fit. We'll go over together, yeah? Yeah. I've got my stuff done, and I've got a bit of extra time to finish off, so I'm going to help Lou with his um, stuff, because he's got loads to do. Andy's next. He takes his monkfish across to the service kitchen. OK, Andy. Andy, we've got ten minutes now. I need ten minutes. Everything plated now, OK? Thank you. One, two, three. There's only three and a half peoples there. So what I'll do is cook them, put them on a plate and keep them warm. I haven't designed the plate yet, and that's important to me. Come on, Andy, get some hungry, mate. Come on. Thank you. That's it, yeah? Just those two. Beautiful. I'm very nervous about what they'll think of it. It's, it feels quite simplistic, but hopefully the flavour will win out over the simplicity. But what will the guests make of Andy's monkfish, pancetta and sage kebabs? Mm. Very good. Mm. Melts in your mouth, quite yes, honestly. They, yeah. they was perfectly cooked. It was, it was moist. It wasn't dried up. I didn't realise that monkfish would be quite so interestingly solid. Lewis is running late to get to the service kitchen. And in the dining room, the guests have already finished their fish course. How are you doing, your lamb? I'm, I'm just going to fry them off. Right, OK. Well, they need to get going, Lou. OK. It's all hands on deck as Lewis only just starts to cook his lamb. How long? Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Before you're ready to start serving. So again. Before you start to serve. Yeah. So it'll be ten minutes before you're all out. Okay. Mayor, Mayoress, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just let you know that main course will be delayed by ten minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Um, That's what I need is though. He's got the plates. He's got the plates. Please, please. Mark, will you? I'm here. What do you want me to do? Just put that juice in that jug for his mate. Lovely. Listen, Lou. Lewis, how long for service, please, mate? Two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah. Can I have one, please? We need to get them out. Let's get one going, Lou. Just, yeah. Let's get a couple out, Lou. Yeah. Plates now, plates. We're all ready to go. That's good to go. Thank you. The lamb is finally going out, but Andy discovers Lewis hasn't prepped enough courgettes. I don't put down enough courgettes. Oh. Hang on, what are you missing? I've got... What are you missing? I'm in the mat now. I've got a guest being served. What's, what's missing from that plate? Nothing. Nothing on that plate. Take those, take those, take those. Take those, those, take those, 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 those two. on those plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, OK. All right, gravy, come on. OK. We might not have enough mushroom, but, mate, we'll have to go easy on the mushroom. Can you spread the carrots around, Andy? Yeah, I'm just going to try and make it work. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Paddy, I think you and I have been shortchanged. We've, we've only got two vegetables, not three. That's right. I see all that... the others have got three. Lewis has rescued his complicated lamb dish, but what will the guests make of his foie gras stuffed breaded lamb chops with carrots and courgettes? Not your average run of the mill mushrooms, these are posh mushrooms. Yeah, I quite agree. Mm. Very good mushrooms. This is actually quite delicious, this meat. And the coating on the outside is extremely good. It's a pity, mm. it's a pity it's gone cold. Mm. You know what, it's a lot more pressure than I thought it was going to be. You're like, wow, the time's gone. It's like, and, 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 and then you're chasing it. It's just chasing the time, you're chasing your tail. And so it's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. OK, Mark, I've got 10 minutes, I need desserts ready to go. All right? 10 minutes, 10 left minutes, please. Service. Thank you. OK, thank you. Presentation is all important for me because I've let myself down with presentation. Mark plates up his apple tart, caramel sauce, blackberry coulis, creme fraiche and almonds. And it all must have the finish of a professional. Hang on, whoa, that's not ready. Go. Lovely, thank you. Bear with me, one second, one second, one second. One second. Okay. All right, don't do it all at once, just give me what you can. All right, yep. OK, it's ready to go. Take that as well. Yeah, take that already. Go, Thank go. You. I'd like to have been a bit less generous with the sauce on the plate, but um, I think it looks edible. Mark may be disappointed with his presentation again, but will it stop the diners enjoying his apple tart with blackberry coulis and caramel sauce? Now, that is absolutely superb. That is delicious. <laughs> Mm. I think it's really lovely. <laughs> Truly. Not bad, that one. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> well, that's the food, that The food, yeah. Very good food. Yeah, yeah. Very good food. Yeah. And, uh, and good company, gentlemen, if I may Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Yeah. Good so company. Good. <laughs> You can hear the applause. What a night. Fantastic. Liz was intelligent tonight because she did a bowl of soup. She set the pace. She is adapting the knowledge she has and the food that she knows to each scenario very well indeed. Andy is so under control. He's so methodical. It was quite simple, though, really. Is it MasterChef final food? Our guests loved it. Lewis gave himself far too much to do. He delivered a dish full of flavour. It was very, very complex. All those plates went out there with irregular portions on it. No two plates looked the same. He couldn't count up the veg he had properly. Mark's issue had to be presentation. He's throwing too many things on a plate. It just isn't clean enough. When these guys wake up tomorrow morning, the enormity of what they've just achieved is going to hit them because they've just pulled off a very high-class dinner party. For tonight, the hard work is over. But there's still one more dinner party test to go. Over the last few days, the celebrities have been pushed to their culinary limits. But who has managed to develop the most? And can they now prove it to John and Greg? I think this is a pivotal part of the semi-finals. And what we want from you today is your best dinner party plate. This is a chance to really show off your skills. You have one hour to cook the best plate of food you have cooked so far in this competition. Just remember, tomorrow, one of you is going home. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's cook. This competition is way harder than I thought it ever would be. I genuinely thought we'd come in, knock up a few dishes and walk home with the title. It, it, nobody will ever know what we've been through, seriously. What, what is the dish, Andy? Duck with an orange sauce. Slightly pink, not overcooked, good crispy skin 
and the sauce will be fantastic. You've given us an amazing expectation of your dish. I have to believe my dish is going to live up to the expectation. Andy's gone very, very simple. You know, he's simply cooking a duck breast, serve it with some orange sauce over bean shoes. I mean, it couldn't get simpler. It better taste great. That's all I know. You've already had ten minutes. Ten minutes gone. Before this competition, I did not cook. I would say I'm a cook now. I would say I'm a good cook as well. You've got some stunning stuff. What are you doing? Uh, Bula base. Bula base, Southern France fish dish. You've eaten the dish before, yes. but as normal, Liz, have you ever cooked it before? Of course I haven't. <laughs> right. You've got some amazing ingredients. You've got prawns, longestines, scallops and fish. They all cook at different times, in different stages. You just put it all in and... Put it all in. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's another soup. It's another stew. I mean, you chop the fish, you chuck it in the pan. You need to see a little bit more than that. We're going to approach the final. 20 minutes left. Well, I think I've improved tenfold since the day I walked in this competition. And that, to me, is invaluable. It's fantastic. What's your dish? It's uh, war tip Chinese dumplings with oyster sauce. It normally takes an hour and a half. And as we've only got an hour, I've really got to <laughs> go for it. Why do you put yourself under that pressure? Because this, I love, I love Chinese dumplings, and I just think it's a great dinner party food. Mark has thrown a trump card. He knows how to make dumplings. He knows how to make proper oyster sauce. If he pulls that off, brilliant. you got ten minutes left, guys. Just ten minutes. I have invested my heart and soul in it. I, and I never thought I would. But this competition has totally um, engulfed me. Going to plan? So far, so good, yeah. And the plan is to serve us what? Guinea fowl with a little bit of stuffing made of sun-dried tomatoes and uh, wild mushrooms. Do I detect a flutter in your voice there, Lewis? This is always nerve-wracking. I mean, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Lewis's dish is an interesting one. It's got lots and lots of ingredients going on again. But for me right now, that needs a good sauce. It needs something to bring it together. You've got two minutes left, guys. Two minutes. That's it. Time's up. Andy needed to concentrate on big flavours. Will his duck in orange sauce meet the judges' expectations? Everything on your plate is cooked perfectly. And the flavours sort of come together and then disappear. The dish you've made needs more spice, needs more heat, just to bring it alive. It does work. I'm not in love with it. There aren't enough dimensions to this. I think it was a disaster today. I think I... I hated it, to be honest. I think it was average, and I shouldn't be doing average, I should be doing spectacular. Will the judges consider Liz's bouillabaisse, a French fish soup, to be an exceptional dinner party dish? Flavours are great. Get the saffron, just a hint, and the slight sweetness of the tomato going with it, and then it hits you a little bit of chilli at the end. But I want to see you do more than food we can eat with a spoon. OK. Actually, I love it. Because it is a really good bowl of fish soup. It is time, though, I believe, Liz, that you could probably do a little bit more. I'm working really hard, and I don't want them to think that, you know, I can't do something more than a soup. I will do better things. I just want to be able to prove that. Mark has gone all out to impress with a complicated dish of Chinese dumplings and oyster sauce. I'm honestly going to say, Mark, that's the best thing you've cooked for us. The pork is full of flavour with sesame oil and spring onions. That, for me, is seriously impressive. Thank you. Your flavours are immense, but your food deserves to look better with the amount of work you've put into it. If I came to this table blindfolded, I'd now be handing you a place in the finals. John and Greg's comments today have um, really boosted my confidence. Um, I think I needed to pull something out of the bag, and hopefully I did that. I was absolutely chuffed. Absolutely chuffed. 
Lewis is serving up guinea fowl stuffed with sun-dried tomatoes with green beans and mushrooms. You've got an earthy flavour which comes with guinea fowl and mushrooms. Tomatoes, though, actually just have no place. It's now, for you, just about that detail. It is, unfortunately, two dishes. I've worked so hard, I think I've invested so much in it, and I don't want it to end. Thank you very much indeed. We'll see you again soon. Well done, Mark. Well done, guys. Yeah, well done, Mark. Well done, Mark. These four celebrities are definitely the most passionate about cooking that we've ever, ever had. Andy is a very, very good cook. But he now just has to add a little bit more flavour to his food. We've got to see more technical elegance balanced with real, real punchy flavour. To say I was worried about my place in the final would be the absolute truth. Up until today, up until this one dish, I've always thought I'm strong enough to get into the final, definitely. Literally on a point system in my own head. But today I think I came fourth and I don't think I've been fourth before. Liz has a gift that many people don't have, and that is that she can actually just cook naturally. But it won't be great until she moves out of her comfort zone. It's all about one-pot cooking. We need more than that for Liz to be a finalist in MasterChef. I think now I really, really need to step up my game, but, like, not by one step. I'm talking, you know, five or six steps. Mark's food today tasted great. It ticked all the boxes of an Asian meal. Authentic, well-flavoured, well-thought-out. It just didn't have that little bit of finesse. Your emotions are up and down and it's very stressful and it's mentally and physically demanding. And so, you know, you're just absolutely shattered by the end of it, but I'm desperate to stay in. Lewis today delivered two dishes on the same plate. But I love the honesty and I love the generosity of his food. Lewis has got to tap back in to the natural great cook he was now, right now. If I want to stay in the competition, I need to be better than I was in, in today's challenge. I need to meet the next challenge head on and be better than I was and hope that that's good enough. They've been through some pretty tough tests, but now they put their food in front of some very tough critics indeed. Our celebrities are going to have restaurant critics judging their food. That is going to put them under a huge amount of pressure. The unfortunate thing is that one of them will go home. Next time, Liz... Andy, Mark and Lewis battle it out for their place in the finals. When it comes down to final three, if I'm in there, I'm going to go hell for leather. To get through to the final would be totally leasing. I'm desperate to get into the final. Desperate is probably the best word I could choose. Maybe the underdog can, can win. The person going home 